welcome back to the homestead the sponsor of today's video is bouge rv i think this is the first major problem that we've got with our house i don't know but i think this could cause some serious problems check it out oh man it's like a super sauna in here the fan is on and every time we take a shower in here it gets completely soaked ceiling to floor so let's cruise out here and see what's going on the fan is running and it's been like this for i don't know a couple of months probably and i've just been putting it off like uh i'll look at it someday but it's getting worse and i think we're going to end up with like a serious mold problem look at that right there that's the bathroom vent. It runs up here. The venting, oh, look at that, man. It's all wet right there. Hopefully that's just from opening the bathroom window to try to get that steam out of there and dry out the bathroom window. But we don't want that. Let's get these lights down and uh, we'll take a look up there and see if, see if there's anything going on up there. Maybe that moisture is there because, you know, the vent pipe got disconnected up there. And now it's just soaking the whole part up here underneath the porch. These lights that we installed up here are cool because they come they come right down. I don't know if we'll actually be able to see anything, but let's check it out. So you come down easy. Yes, you do. I hope so anyway. Oh, there we go. There's where it comes out of the house. That looks good. Ah. Look at that. I bet that is our problem, man. I'll tell you. Let me, let's look down here at this light first, and then I'll give you my diagnosis. Let me know down in the comments below if you got any ideas why it's not working yet. Or why it's, oh man, it's like a mousetrap. This thing right here, it's like a mousetrap. All right, let's look in here. Coming down along here. Got a dip there, we got a dip there, a dip there. My thought is, and my hope is, is that those dips collected water, right? The, the hot steam coming through there all winter long, collected water in those dips, maybe. The problem is, that's my access. And that's my access. How am I gonna get up there to try to fix that? And how do I fix it permanently so that doesn't just happen again next winter, if that's even the problem? I'm not sure, but I'm going to think about that for a minute. You guys think about it too. Let me know down in the comments below. Should I have put an access panel in here? How should I fix that? What should I have done differently that would have made it better? I don't know. There's all kinds of problems, but that's not what we were planning on doing today. It's what we're going to have to end up doing today is fixing that, I think. Look at that. 49 degrees out here. This is our freezer currently. Hopefully there's nothing in it. It's dirty, man. Blah. It's dirty. We're going to take this in the garage because the garage is finally finished. And then we're going to start stocking it. Because it's time to really get our preps on. We made it into town. We got a bunch of errands that we're gonna be running today, but we're just gonna take this opportunity to start stocking up. Hey, Jules, almost <laughs> ran right into you. I almost ran into you. <laughs> Bought 16. It looks like we could have bought more. 
Wow, yeah. That's like only like half of our space. Cool. So we could have probably got like 30, 30 pounds in there. Nice. Bouge RV just sent us their 23 quart refrigerator freezer. It can operate on 12 volts or 24 volts DC, or you can plug it into your wall and it'll operate from 100 volts to 240 volts AC. It'll go from 50 degrees all the way down to negative eight, which makes it perfect for like storing your sandwiches in while you're out on a trip or for transporting meat home from the grocery store. Plus guys, it works super for ice cream. Marty didn't mention the most cool part, you guys, and that it's pink. It is <laughs> pink. It's like Barbie pink. You know, I opened the box and, and I saw that it was pink. I'm like, that's pink. I wasn't like, I don't know. But then I, pink guy. I, don't know, you know, I, I took it out of the box and then I'm like, oh man, this thing is actually really cool. Like I'm happy that they sent us a pink one. There's also two other pillars that they have. One is like a mint green and purple. It has two power modes. The max is 45 watts and then they have an eco mode that's 36 watts. And if you're running it off of their accessory battery pack here, you're probably gonna wanna run it on the 36 watts so that the battery pack lasts a little bit longer. But they also have this cool cover that goes along with it that has a nice handle and keeps it cool a little bit longer and protects it. And it's not very heavy at all. You guys no, yeah. saw me pick it up. But I do think that this little, the cover that they have for it is really cool because it slips over here. It keeps it insulated a little bit more and it has a handle. Yeah. So you carry it. So you carry it with one hand. With one hand. Yeah. Because it's way light enough to carry with one hand. Yeah. I mean, like, it's <laughs> empty. Like, a finger on each hand, you can carry it. So if it was full of yeah. ground beef. That might be a different story. Yeah, like if you've got 30 pounds of ground beef in there, then that's a different story. Yeah. But if you just have ice cream in there? Yeah, like if you just have a couple of quarts of ice cream? You could do one of them. For sure. <laughs> one of the questions that I had about this is what happens when you turn your car off, right? You've got it plugged into a 12 volt outlet on your car. You turn it off, is it gonna drain your battery like dead while you're away from your car? On our car, our 12 volt outlet is not powered all the time. So when you turn the truck off, this thing shuts off, which isn't a big deal because it's cold, it's insulated, and you're away from the car for an hour or two, you come back. And what's really cool though, is that when you start the car back up, it automatically turns on to the temperature that you had it set at and it just keeps running like it's supposed to. But what if your outlet is always powered? Will it drain your battery? to the point where you can't start your car. It won't because it has three different like safety levels that you choose. You choose which one you want. And so that way it'll run even though the car's turned off. But once your battery voltage in your car gets to the pre-selected level, this will automatically shut off so that you can still start your car later. Yeah, they works. thought about that problem, which would be a serious problem, but they've addressed it. So we wanna thank Bouge RV for sponsoring this video and they are having a giveaway guys that you might just get a free one like this. Yeah, maybe a pink one like us. Maybe a pink one. There are links down in the description below that you can check out and some really cool discount codes as well. If you don't win one and you just wanna pick one up for yourself. Yep. Wanna thank Bouge RV for sponsoring this video once again and let's get back to work. Wow, that's just a drop in the bucket for <laughs> Storing up our freezer here. It's a start though. It's a start. <laughs> so I've done some studying on it. I think, I think the problem is just those dips. They're full of water. So I got a plan. I'm gonna try to get that water out. I'm gonna put you guys up in the hole. I want you to hold the flashlight for me and um, be my eyes, okay? Because 
This is gonna be hard. All right, you guys got that flashlight steady? Sir, yes, sir! Got the swifter handle here. Wow. Since I can't, uh, since I can't stick my head up here, I gotta look through the camera. Oh, wow, dude, that thing, that, that's heavy. Uh, let me flip it around so I don't use the other handle. Oh, you guys okay? Oh, give you a headache probably. Let's turn this guy around. Use the non-sharp side. Oh, you guys, I'm so sorry. You guys are real troopers. You're hanging in there good. Somebody's writing in the comments right now. You should have used rigid pipe. Ooh, I moved it. Yeah. And now my six is straight. It is. <laughs> it's straight. All right, well, we got it moved some, but there's some in there that we can't reach. And so I think Jules had a good idea where we, we come in from the end and we run something up it that will lift it out of all of those and then hopefully it'll, it'll flow out. And then how do we fix it permanently? I think we just leave that, leave the pipe up there. Oh yeah, Inside yeah. of it. Yeah, I like what you were saying. Because that would that. just be rigid. Yeah, but when we put that pipe in, mm -hmm. we don't want to, uh, we don't want to poke a hole in it. Yeah. I know. Type it in there. You should have used rigid pipe. <laughs> I should have. I should have. Now I know. Why didn't we? I just, don't know. I just didn't really think about it. I think we need to get the taller ladder probably. This thing says it's 110 in here. Wow. <laughs> we got to get those vents down. Yeah. Soon. But check this out, Joss. Look at this. <gasps> wow. Sunflowers. Woohoo. Sprouting already. So awesome. Hopefully it's not getting too hot for everything else. The tomatoes and the peppers probably be fine, but we got like all kinds of vegetables in here. But it's way hot. Watts, you love 110, don't you? <laughs> you love 110 weather? Ray does too. Ray, you love 110? Hi ho, hi ho. It's home from work. All right, we've got our vent off. And Jules's idea is that we slip a pipe up in here and use it to get it out. Let's try it anyways. Try it, dude. It might just work. It's too long to start with, huh? Uh, yep. I have to, have to do it by section, which is nice because it comes in sections. First section taped up so hopefully it doesn't poke a hole. It'd be terrible if it poked a hole. Then we'd really have to figure something out. We don't want to lose that end either. Nope. Okay. Okay. I'm ready for the water to gush out. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> it came gushing from there. Okay, so we got part of it done. That's funny, I wasn't actually ready. <laughs> Why, it's not a good idea, buddy. He's thinking he wants to go up in that hole. What? <laughs> no, 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 what? Get it, get it, what, 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 what? You bugger. No, 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 no. Come on. Come on, come on. You don't want to do that. No. You'll get lost forever. <laughs> no, we haven't got this section over here yet. That same one. Oh, there's water leaking, Marty. Yep. Can you pull the pipe? Can it pull the pipe towards you? The vent, I mean. There you go. Keep a little more. Okay, now lift it up. That probably is gonna do it. So, as you can see, we poked a hole in it. That means. What does that mean, Jules? I think that means that we're gonna have to open that end up and replace it with a rigid vent. Don't you yeah, think so? Probably. Yeah, we're gonna have to get up in there. I don't even know if there's enough room for a full-size human like myself to get in there. I don't know, guys. Arr.
Now we need to take this metal off up here. There's OSB under it. We'll take a look at that, but we're gonna have to be able to climb up in there and fix the vent. Maybe and if we have to do that, we're gonna put rigid in there. Maybe Seth or I can climb get, in there. Yeah, maybe Seth and I could fit in there and you could guide us through the process if we have to do that. Okay, we'll see who can fit. Or Tux, we'll send Tux. Send Tux. <laughs> Yeah, he'd be real good at it. <laughs> I guess the nice thing about metal siding like this, you could just take out the screws and the siding should come right off. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't mess it up or anything. Clean, except for the sawdust they just put in there. <laughs> We're gonna have to make a little bigger hole. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> New blade. This video has a lot of fails in it. <laughs> How many obstacles do we need to overcome? Lots. In one video. I climbed up here to see with my own eyes and it really does look like a tight fit, you guys. Ooh. Yeah. I don't know, crawl on our belly? What do you guys think? It's a good distance to get all the way over to there. Maybe, Marty? Yeah. Maybe on our belly. Do we have to stay on the trusses or can we go on the... I mean, you could touch it, but you probably like shouldn't put all your weight on the ceiling. Hmm. So for right now, I think we need to see if we could even get up in here. If we can get up in here, then we can fix it and we could do a really good job and put some rigid pipe in there. So we're gonna Seth if he can fit up in there. <laughs> Alrighty, my friend. Maybe you should hold the ladder, Joes. Okay. Um, so, oh yeah. So try not to put weight on the ceiling, just on the yeah. two by fours. Yeah. So I put that there so that you'd have more room. Where is the problem? We gotta go all the way to the end of that tubing. The but you don't have to go all the way in there right now. Just get your whole body in there if you can. Yeah, because I don't know how I would get back out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so small. <laughs> you gotta go all the way in. I know. <laughs> yeah, I can do it. Yeah, okay, go. No. <laughs> yeah, dude, we gotta make sure. I only wanna get out once. I agree. You sure you can get back out? Possibly. I know I can get in though. I believe in you. Yeah, I can get out. I mean, I can get in. Getting out is another, another problem. All right, <laughs> cool. We're gonna have to go get the parts. By the time we get back, it's already gonna be dark. So we're gonna go ahead and end the video here. But when we get this thing finished, then we'll show you Seth climbing in and Maybe getting hurt or something. We don't know for maybe, sure. Maybe getting stuck. We'll see. Maybe, maybe getting stuck. Maybe we'll call the fire department out to get him. I don't know. But we got this video right up here for you to go ahead and watch next. We hope you guys have a really great day and keep smiling.